everyone welcome back to a new lesson my name is Bokis of Bokis Signature so welcome to today's class which will be on how to draft a basic bodice pattern this is just like the basis for anyone who wants to learn how to cotton so so from our previous class whereby we learned how to take accurate body measurements so I came up with my own body measurement which you have to take yours too now the first measurement is the shoulder measurement, which is 17 inches for me. Then going to the vertical measurement that is from the nape downward, why the horizontal measurement is around your body. So my bust point measurement is 10 and a half inches, waist length is 16 inches, hip length is 24 inches, and the length of my top is 26. Going to the horizontal measurements, my bust circumference is 42 inches, Waist circumference is 36 inches, hip circumference is 44 inches, bust pan measurement is 9 inches. That is distance from one nipple to the other. Now going to the sleeve, my armhole round is 17 inches. Sleeve opening, that is the opening where you want it to stop. For instance, if it is the short sleeve, long sleeve, medium sleeve, depending on your preference. So mine is short sleeve, which is 14 inches then the sleeve length it could be short long that's why I left it blank so but for a short I make use of 8 to 9 so that depends on your preference now for this armhole round measurement at times I don't really measure that there is a formula we use in calculating that which is your bust measurement divided by 6 plus one and half so all I have to do is to put 42 inches here 42 divided by 6 plus one and half which will give me eight and a half inches. So when I divide this also, 17 divided by two, that will also give me eight and a half inches. So that is that on that. The thing I have to point out is this. For your shoulder measurement, you only divide that by two. Note that, so when we want to impute it on our pattern, it will be 17 divided by two, which is eight and a half then the vertical measurement remains the same. That's not altered, you're not dividing anything at all. Now going to the horizontal measurement. Your bust circumference waist hip is going to be, that is this three, no. It's going to be divided by four. That is because we are folding our fabric or our pattern paper into two. So when you're folding for the front, you fold into two, for the back you fold into two, so that makes it a total of four. So that is why your bust waist hip circumference will be divided by four. For instance, 42 divided by four will give me 10 and a half. Waist, when I divide this 36 by four, it will give me nine. 44 divided by four will give me 11. So note that. Then for your bust span, that will only be divided by two. So as we go on, you understand more and more about it. So now let us start drafting. It is time for us to start drafting. So here I have my paper. You can either use a cardboard paper or a pattern paper. And then in case your pattern paper or your cardboard paper is not long enough, all you have to do is to join it together with a tape, like what I did here when you look at this. So I just joined it up and then make sure it is on fold because this upper part will be for the front while the lower part will be for the back. So the first thing we are going to do now is this. How do you know the amount of paper to fold and the length required? For the length, you just need the length of your top. And from our measurement here, it is 26. So you should have extra one or two inches to that. So 26, so that means in length, my paper should be about 27 or 28. Then for the width, you take your largest circumference here, which is the hip measurement, 44 divide that by four by four and that will give me 11 then plus seam allowance and hold that so the habit just had about two inches to that which will give me 13 but looking at my paper i have more than that so i'm covered good the first thing i have to do is to just make a straight line which will be the starting point for my drafting then the next thing will be to insert the vertical measurement as we have here first the bust point line so from the straight line you start inserting 
10 and half inches for that. Then the next is the waist length, which is 16 inches for me. Then the hip, which is 24. Yours could be shorter than this. It depends on your height. To make it straight, you can just come forward here and also insert it to have a straight line. So 10 and half for the boss points. Waist length 16, hip 24. Then I'm going to make all that into a straight line. Then another thing we must not forget is the length of the top, which is 26 for me. So 26 is here. That is the length of the top. Now we have to go back to the shoulder line now to talk about the shoulder slope. This is the bust point line. This is the waist length. Hip length. And then the length of the top. measurement there are some standard whereby we need to use to determine the shoulder slope when you look at yourself or the mannequin you find out that the shoulder is not straight it is slopy so there are some variants we use to determine the shoulder slope which is a constant I call it the three inches eight inches standard so first you have to measure three inches from the head here then go ahead and measure eight inches. Good. So this is a standard for all women. Then from this eight inches, you will now have to go down by half an inch first, then one inch. The half an inch will be for the back, while the one inch will be for the front. That is because when you look at yourself, the back is a little bit higher than the front that is why it is like that so what i will do now so from this three inches standard connect the one inch first let me see that's for the front let me use another marker for the back so now with these we have achieved the shoulder slope. So these upper parts will not be needed. We'll only reckon with the green for the back and the blue for the front. Having done that now, we need to determine our chest line. And how do you do that? All you have to do is to take half of your ham round. From my measurement here, my ham hole round is 17. So when I divide that by two, I'm gonna have eight and a half. So in case you did not measure yours, all you have to do is to use the same formula to achieve half of your ham hole. So when I'm working with anybody, all I do is to take the person's bust measurement divided by six and whatever I get plus one and half. So for me, that gives me eight and a half. Since I know half of my ham hole or ham hole round is eight and a half, so all I have to do is from the starting point to measure eight and a half. Eight and a half. So that's gonna be my chest line. This is going to be the 
chest line. Can you see that? Or half of the hammer line. The next thing will be to insert her shoulder measurement. And my shoulder measurement here is 17 inches. Yours could be 16, yours could be uh, 15. That depends on what your shoulder measurement is. So for me now, 17 divided by 2 is going to be 8 and half. So I'm going to start from the head of the paper and measure 8 and half. So mine is a little bit after the 8 inches standard. For instance, if yours is, after dividing it, is 8 inches, that means you are going to be exactly on the standard. For instance, if yours, yours is 7 and half, measure 7 and half, so that will be before the 8 inches standard. So it is just to determine the slope. The next thing on the chest line, I will measure 8 and half. Half of my shoulder measurement. Draw a straight line now. We have the ham hole line. That's good. The next thing I'm going to do is to insert the horizontal measurement. So, here now, I told you you have to divide all your horizontal measurement bust waist hip into four. So, 42 for my bust circumference. When I divide that, it's going to give me 10 and half. That's going to be inserted on the chest line. Now, I would advise you to always add ease to your pattern or to your, or to your clothes. If you are drafting directly on your clothes, you can draft directly on your fabric. Well, what is ease? These are just some excesses, excess, some allowance you had to your garment to make it free on your body. And it is advisable because it is better for you to have a loose outfit rather than having it tight whereby you won't be able to adjust it. So a minimum of half a quarter inch to half an inch is fine. Now, since I have 10 and a half, I'm just going to have an ease of half an inch, which that will make it 11. 11 inches, but note that, that half an inch you had it to the pattern because it will be added back when you are talking about the sleeve So just put that on your left hand. So I have 11 inches going to the waist The waist is 36 inches divided by 4 that will give me 9 I will also advise you to add half an inch to 1 inch to that too So 9 plus half an inch that will give me 9 and half if you are someone with big tummy, you could do three quarter to one inch for the ease, especially at the waist area. So having done that now, I've inserted my waist measurement. But in most cases, you find out that our outfit has that on it. So under that, by standard, is just one inch to sew in. But this one inch will be sewing in at the waist area needs to be added back to the measurement because if we do not add it and take one inch, you, you, it will be shorter by one inch, which will not be able to enter you. So for the dart now, I'm going to add one inch. But if you are making a dartless bodies, you don't need to add that extra one inch. Good. So the if now, if is 44 divided by four, that, I'm going to, that is going to give me 11 inches. So 11 will be here plus extra half an inch for the ease. That will make it 11 and half. So having done that now, we can connect it up. So first let us connect the one with the dot because you'll be making two assignments for me, the dot and the dotless. So that's from the bust to the waist. So from the waist now to the hip, you'll be making use of your hip curve. Can you see that? So now to the length of the top, all you have to do Put your ruler on the waist at the hip area, can you see, then extend here. So that is 
very, very easy. Just blend it up. Good. That is for the dart. So if you don't want your outfit to have a dart, especially for stretchy fabric and all that, all you have to do is to connect from the bustier to the actual waist measurement of nine and a half with the ease. So I'm going to use a contrasting color. You see? So this for the dartless and this for the dart. So another thing we need to do is this. Just to make it a little bit curvy at the hop, at the lower part, just go up by half an inch or three quarter inch. Then using my hip curve, I'm just gonna curve it into this point. Don't let it go beyond the bust span. Let's leave that for now. So that's it. The stage will be to insert the ham hole curve. So all you have to do from this lower part, lower slope, measure whatever you have. For me, I have seven and a half inches. Divide it by two to make it easier. Fold your tape from seven and a half. So this is what I have. So that will be the half. Good. So from there, go in by three quarter inch. That is for the front ham hole. Now, take your ham hole curve. You can use any type of ham hole curve for that. First, I'm going to connect from this edge. So that three quarter inch I came in by. Then use the curve part, rotate it till it matches this point. Can you see? So that's for the front ham hole. And then for the back, that's easy. Sorry for the front, you had to take it from this line. Sorry for that mistake. Please don't make that mistake. So, let me see, that's going to be from that line. Let me see. So, let me just erase this. Now, this is the front ham hole again from the arm hole line and not from the 8 inches standard. So, for the back, all you have to do is to connect, make a curve to this point whereby we went in. Good. So this ham holds goes up to the back here. Now the ham hold is formed. You might be wondering that why did I make the front ham hold deeper and the back wider? That is because you, your hands moves forward. So the back still remains wide, wide the front. You need to get rid of these excesses so as not to have some fold around that. That is why the front arm hole is deeper than the back arm hole. Let's quickly insert our dart. That is where we need the bust point, the bust pan measurement. So for me, it is nine. On the average, it is seven and a half, eight for most women. For me, it is nine inches. So all you have to do is to divide it by two. So when I divide nine by two, I'm gonna have four and a half. So on the bust point line now, just insert four and a half. Then go to the heat line, insert four and a half. Then make a straight line.
so good that is our that line so remember we had extra one inch for the that so now that is going to be taken in that's the part that's going to be so in so on the waist now take half an inch here half an inch here can you see so it's some totals to one inch then from the bust point line you come down by one inch that's also a standard because you don't want to sew your dart up to your bust point from the lower part here you come up by one and half so look at how i'm going to connect it That is the that the tart has been fully formed. The next thing will be for the neckline. The neckline by standard should be these three inches in width by three inches. That's for the front. And then for the back, it remains three inches by one. So using your handhold curve, so make this a little bit straight. So by standard, this is what the neckline is going to look like. But for this neckline, this is the back, this is the front. This is the back handhold, this is the front. From this neckline, if you are making any outfit with this, it has to have a zipper. That is when you have one inch seam allowance to the zipper at the back. Now, but if you want to make a top, like in our next class, we'll be making a basic top. You want a top that just passes through your head without a zipper. How do you determine the neckline and neck width for that? It is very easy. All you have to do is to expand the neck width and you could drop the neck depth. So for instance, now I could just make it four inches. So four inches, that's gonna be here. Can you see? Then for the neck depth, we can make it four and a half. So with this, it's just gonna pass through your head easily. I'll take your hammer curve now. Can you see? Make this straight a bit. You always play around with your hammer curve. Let me use another marker. Let me see that. So by standard, this is the neck width and neck depth. For you to have a zipper so that it stays right on your neck. But if you are making a top that you just want it to pass through your head, you make use of a wider neckline like in our next class we'll be making use of this very neckline so you can see this is just pretty easy lastly now we have to make the curve at the lower part just make sure when you are making the curve it doesn't pass this dark line which is somewhere here so take your hip curve let me see Beautiful. So we have our basic bodies ready. So what we are going to do now is this. We need to transfer this dart to the back because we are going to be splitting this into two. So this will be for the front and the, the that of the back is going to be for the back. We're cutting it out. Remember we said you can expand the neckline but since we have dropped the front panel we also have to make the back wider so don't make that mistake so for the back now if you are making it wider 
this is how you place your ham hook off to the one inch now you have to redraw so the blue one is by standard the neckline that just gets to your neck but if you want a wider one that will pass through your head you make use of this green one that is four inches by four and a half Then another thing now is this, because some beginners have those problems. For instance, your bust measurement might be wider than that of your hip measurement. Shape, I would suggest you use the, that same bust measurement for your hip measurement because you don't want your bust fitted and then your hip area looking small. That is from here now, you now have something like this. It's going to look funny. So if, if your bust is bigger than your hoop with your hips, I would advise you use the same bust measurement as your hip measurement. So you have your hip area free. It will make your shape look funny. Then for some people that will have their um, waist area bigger, like people that have big tummy that is going to be bigger than maybe the for instance let's say it's bigger than the hip so i would advise you to use whatever uh, waist uh, measurement you have use the same measurement for the hip measurement so that you won't have it you know having your waist measurement here then your hip measurement here it's going to look funny so it's better you use the bigger measurement also for your hip so I just have to, you know, make all those tips for those people that has, you know, funny shape. There's no big deal about that, but you should always adjust your pattern to suit that. So now let's just cut it out. So when we are cutting, we cut the back panel first. And for instance, let's just cut the, the wider one. But if you want the, the normal one, you can do that. You can always just expand it, even when you want to make any type of clothes at all. So now, so can you see what I did? Now we are going to cut the back first. Because remember, I only cut the back neckline. Now you'll be cutting the back shoulder. Now this is, you don't need this again. Because you now determine the slope. So I'm going to cut on the grain. You will see. Then the back hand pull. So beautiful. Now we have our basic body pattern. So what I'm going to do now is to split this into two. Can you see? So this will be for the back and this for the front. Take your time as a beginner, you don't need to rush. Good. Now, since we have this, all I'm going to do remember, I said for the back, all we need is the chest line. So, just mark that. And you see, I'm marking that chest line, waist and then the hip. We don't need the bust 
uh, point at the back because there is no boobs at the back. So that's the waist. So So what I'll do is to make it into a straight line. That's the waist. This is the hip. And this is the chest line. So knowing where the curve hand here is the chest line. Good. So this is the back. Let's leave this aside and quickly finish with the front pattern. Now for the front pattern, what do we do? We now have to cut the front neckline and then the arm hole. That's all we have to do. So if you are making use of the three inches on your cut on this blue line. Then don't forget to cut away the back shoulder because you don't need that again. So now this is what our front basic bodies pattern looks like. You can see that was pretty easy. Now let's go to the back. So what we have to do at the back now is to insert the dart. And what we have to do is to use our bust pan measurement. Remember for me it is nine, then when I divide by two, it's going to give me four and a half. So on this chest line, just mark four and a half, and then on the hip, four and a half. The only difference was that they were, we inserted the dark line on the bust line in the front panel. an inch on both sides so from the chest line come down by one inch and from here you go up by one inch for the front we made it one and a half is formed. Both the front and the back basic body is ready. So this is for the back and this is for the front. So we use like one pattern to achieve that. So when you place it on each other now, can you see? So this is the back, the back neckline, the back shoulder is higher. Can you see? And then the back ham hole. That's pretty easy. And we've inserted that that there. So now your assignment. So first you have to draft this basic bodies with that. As you can see here. And then you will draft your dartless basic bodies. In that case, you won't put this dart at all. That's very easy to make. And then instead of having this one inch, you stop here. So for your dartless, you just cut through this way. This will be off and no dart. So you are going to draft your basic bodies with that and your dartless bodies. So those are your assignments. Hope my tutorial on how to make this has been very helpful. So see you in the next class.